nice win for the Utah Jazz. They get two in a row now. Tonight it was a win over the Portland Trailblazers. It was on the back end of the back of a back to back on the road, and they get the win. How'd they do it? Let's talk about it. It's the Hoopsner Show. All right, guys, before we get into this, let's just give a shout out to our sponsor, Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com, use promo code HoopsNerd. You will have a blast. And if you use promo code HoopsNerd, you will get free money. They will give you up to a $100 match. So if you go in and you deposit $5 and you want to do $5 on, you know, Colin Sexton hitting the over because Keontae George is out, it's not very hard to figure these things out. Then you would have won easy. And guess what? You would have got free money too. By the way, it also supports the channel. I have a blast doing it. I know you will too. Go to pricepicks.com. Use promo code HoopsNerd. I would appreciate it. All right, guys. So the Utah Jazz get a really nice win tonight over the, the Portland Trail Blazers. I know the Blazers came back at the end, but the Jazz were not really trying at that point. And the Blazers just kind of slowly worked their way back into it behind um, Scoot Henderson, who played pretty well tonight. Um, uh, but that's really all we got to say about the Blazers. I mean, I was interested. I'm always interested to watch Scoot Henderson because I was pretty big on him. And he's just having a struggle this rookie year. Now, it doesn't mean a lot because some players just t it takes time. You know, Darius Garland was like the worst player in the NBA when he first started. And then he just slowly kind of figured things out. And now he's just an awesome all-star caliber point guard. Same goes with Scoot Henderson. I think he definitely has that ability, but he's got some things to figure out. Uh, for whatever reason, he doesn't start, though, and I don't know why, and I have never been the biggest fan of of Chauncey Billups as the coach, and he's done nothing to make me think otherwise, and so, not great, not great, and if they're losing games anyway, why aren't they playing uh, Scoot Henderson? <laughs> I get that Anthony Simons is probably a better player in a vacuum right now, but you want to you wanna play uh, Scoot Henderson, so... Really nice. Uh, James, did I say Kessler revenge game? I can't even remember. I think I vaguely recall saying that. Although last night was so late, it was a blur. I figured it, he's going to be just playing better and better and better. And it's nice to see because you can kind of tell he's getting that confidence back. And speaking of that, let's get into and talk about the Jazz. Uh, man, I got another sneeze coming. It's going to come. And I'm not going to be able to stop it. But let's just keep going until it does. Uh, Simone Fontecchio, uh, he's had some up and downs recently. I mean, the shooting has been bad. I mean, to, you know, it's really nice to see him have an, a game tonight. And we're here to give him his flowers, as they say. But he has also been not shooting it quite as well the last three games. The last game, I believe he was like three for ten last game. And the game before was not all that great. But he's still playing good you know, I don't know if good defense is how we should describe it. He plays hard on defense, you know, and so against a bad team like the Blazers, it really shows up in a nice way. He struggled against Kawhi, but Kawhi in his last 10, 20 games has been looking like, honestly, like Michael Jordan uh, in the 1999-98 finals against the Jazz. That's like how Kawhi's playing right now. So I'm not going to like ding Fontecchio for that, but when he's out there, he is playing really hard. Uh, and at when Lowry Markinen comes, I mean, last game, they actually had Fontecchio starting next to Markinen with John Collins out, and it worked. It's, it's interesting. He brings nice size, and he moves really well for how big he is. And he's showing more things than just kind of the bombing threes that he does. He's driving to the basket. He's doing a lot of those types of things. He's getting offensive rebounds. He's doing more than just be a shooter which we kind of just kind of got used to him doing last season and early in this season too, where it's just like Fontecchio gets the ball, he's a shooter, and he shoots it. And that's all that happens. And now he's doing different things. He's driving to the basket. He's getting to the free throw line. He took five free throws tonight. That's awesome. That's a big sign there. So the Jazz have developed Fontecchio into a nice, you know, role player that can come off the bench. He can start in spot minutes, like or just start, because of injuries like he did tonight um is he gonna win an all-star game no 
Is he going to be the most important player on the Jazz going forward? No, but he is a nice player to have. He plays hard, and he's a guy you can tell is going to just constantly try to improve and get better, which is what he's done, so it's nice to see. James, you say you said big Kessler game coming after the Thunder game. Thank you. Well, I, I guess pat myself on the back. Thanks, James. <laughs> From one James to another, thank you. I thank you. All right, let's see. Kelly Olynyk, uh, he played 24 minutes tonight. You know, the numbers aren't all that great, but you look at this, seven assists, 10 rebounds. You know, he didn't score. He scored two points. Olynyk was on triple-double. It's funny, we were talking about triple-doubles. You know, was, I was kind of laughing because, you know, everyone, once the Jazz get close to a triple-double, everyone starts going, is this it? And then it never happens. <laughs> and it's been like 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I tweeted it just because it made me laugh, just thinking, what if the Jazz never get a triple-double again? Are we going to survive? Are we going to be okay? I hope so. I think I think we might not make it. You know, there is a possibility that the Jazz never have a triple-double ever again. Like, it's never, ever going to happen. And you know what? <laughs> That's the thing. Watch the Jazz win a title, like a literal NBA championship before they get a triple-double. Which comes first? Triple double or NBA championship? In fact, let's just do a poll for this. For those who are here live, do the jet which comes first? Comes first. Uh, jazz champions. Jazz triple double happens. All right. There we go. Let's see. It's the hard-hitting poll of the century. We got to find out what comes first. What comes first? It'll be so funny, though. Something like Kel Someone like Kelly Olynyk will get it like late in the season. If the Jazz are doing poorly and they're just losing games, watch Kelly Olynyk drop you know, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, 10 points. <laughs> just like on the Charlotte Hornets who might be doing the same thing and losing games as like the Jazz. Something like that is my prediction is when the triple-double happens. But you never know. Maybe it's when uh, Cooper Flagg joins the Utah Jazz and he's getting triple-doubles every night. How about that? Maybe that's when it happens. So, uh, James mentions uh, Walker Kessler only needed three more blocks, and that is absolutely correct. And he might have broken the curse, but he sat the whole fourth quarter, and he had seven blocks. It would have been, I tell you what, if the Jazz are going to break the triple-double record, it would be fun to do it something kind of crazy like that where it's with blocks, you know? The big question is, who's going to be the next person in the NBA to break the quadruple uh, record? You know, it may break the internet if it happens. And and watch it be Dante Exum for the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> But anyways, uh, Walker Kessler had an awesome night. And like, you know, James, I've been feeling like this was coming because Kessler, I think so many of his his issues have just been kind of mental things where just he's just so in his head. And you can just tell at times where he's just he's getting so down on himself. And one thing I think he's got to learn because Kessler's still really young as well. Is he's gotta not he's gotta just forget things really fast. You know, someone like Colin Sexton can really teach Walker Kessler that. Co Colin Sexton forgets <laughs> he forgets something bad that happens literally seconds later. <laughs> it's like Colin's second Colin, not Colin Sexton, Colin seconds later he forgets the bad shot he took. <laughs> and and Walker Kessler could learn a lot from Colin Sexton because that's you know. In a lot of ways, and most times, that's not a bad thing. Once in a while, it's a bad thing. You know, if there's a certain player that can't seem to ever learn to not shoot the ball, you know, it can be a bad thing. But you do have to learn that, especially as a pro, because you're going to have bad things happen. Like the last time the Jazz played the Blazers before this game, remember how Kessler got dunked on like big time twice in a row? Does anyone remember? I guess me. But, you know... I don't even know if Blazers fans remember. Maybe they do. I, But no one outside of the Jazz and the Blazers remember that. And if they do, it's vaguely. And you've just got to forget the bad things that happen. And that's kind of how life is, guys. In your life, 
Let the bad things roll off of you. Stop thinking about that weird thing you did in high school. Stop thinking about that weird comment at that party you made when you were all sitting around playing truth or dare and you said something really stupid and it ruined the rest of the, the school year for you. Stop thinking about it. It doesn't matter. No one remembers it. You're the only one who thinks about it, okay? And that's my message to Walker Kessler. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. You get dunked on, you lose the ball out of bounds, something bad happens, you miss a shot, forget about it. But guess what? Learn about it. Don't say stupid things at a party next time, okay? Don't 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 do something something really dumb, okay? Next time, don't do those things. So, one of the things I would love to see Walker Kessler do is sometimes I wish he would dunk the ball more. Dunk it on somebody. Great things happen. Great things happen when you dunk the ball. It either goes in or you get fouled, typically. You know, and I, there's a few times where I think Walker Kessler tries to lay it in, and it's a little bit of the Rudy Gobert thing, too. It used to drive me crazy. Dunk the ball, Rudy. Dunk the ball. And same goes with Walker Kessler. I'm, I'm not a tall guy. And it makes me jealous of these guys that are seven foot, seven foot one. You know what I, you know what us short guys would do? We'd dunk the ball if we had the chance. It's like us guys who don't have hair on our head. You know what we would do if we had hair on our head? We certainly wouldn't have a buzz. We'd be we'd be showing that that stuff, right? Same thing. If you're up there at the the rim, dunk the ball. That's all I would say. And I'm not here to bet like talk bad about Walker Kessler because Walker Kessler was awesome tonight. Uh, 10 rebounds, 10 points, seven blocks, one steal, four assists. I mean, he's going for that quadruple double, baby. He could have gone for the quintuple double, the quintuple double. Have has it ever happened? Maybe it'll happen with the jazz. Who knows? Quintuple double. But anyways, it sounds like a Wendy's burger, a quintuple double. <laughs> But anyways, Walker Kessler was fantastic tonight, and it's really just that defensive presence. And what gets me, what's really fun to think about is how good Walker Kessler is with Taylor Hendricks. Those two together are awesome. And we saw tonight that that duo, and we saw it last game as well, those two together are absolutely, they wreak havoc. I mean, they, I mean, are you kidding? The way they protect the rim when you've got Walker Kessler and both of them can go out and guard on the perimeter and then they don't have to worry because they know the weak side is protected by the other guy. I mean, we got to come up for a nickname for Kessler Hendricks because Walker, Taylor, Taylor Walker, Hendricks, Kessler, the Walk Hess, Hen, Hen, Hennessy, I don't know. But it's something, and we got to start thinking about it because that is a defensive duo that is going to wreak havoc on a lot, a lot of teams. And as Hendricks gets better and better, which is he's doing, but <coughs> there's that sneeze. That as Hendricks gets better, that we're expecting, or that we're seeing every single game. I mean, he gets better every single game. Tonight, he's looking more and more comfortable with seeing him drive to the rim and hammer it. He's he's knocking down threes. Will Hardy's running plays for him to just get open threes. I mean, he had that one segment where the guy was trying to throw the ball inbounds. He steals the ball. He goes to the other end. They throw him the ball, the ball, and he hits a transition three. A transition three. I mean, the guy is talented, and Hendricks is going to play for this Jazz team for 10 years, and he's going to be awesome, and he's first-team all-defense potential. It's awesome. So the Jazz hit a home run on Hendricks. They hit a home run on on Keontae George. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And at some point this season, at some point this season, we're going to see the lineup that I would like to see where it's Keontae George, Ochai Abaji, Lowry Markkinen, Taylor Hendricks, Walker Kessler. I think that's the lineup everyone's been wanting to see. It's the lineup everyone's excited about, and I think we're getting a little bit closer because of how well Hendricks is playing. By the way, Andy Larson had an article out at the, at the Trib that's really great. You should go check it out. Um, just with some trade rumor and some trade insights and things, um, which reminds me I've got an article i got to publish on the SLC Dunk from one of the writers. Uh, but anyways, the, the rumor on the street from from the trib is that the jazz are a little frustrated with 
with John Collins' um, understanding of the offense and how long it's taking him to figure all these things out, and that that guy could be had on the trade de- trade market. And I believe tomorrow is the 15th where players can be traded. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if John Collins gets moved because the Jazz are probably interested in getting Taylor Hendricks more minutes. And because they have Simone Fontecchio, um, they have obviously Larry Markinen, and, you know, even the guy like Micah Potter, Lucas Samanich, they've got enough depth. So if there's an injury, they're okay. If they can get like a first round pick for John Collins from somebody, even like a not very good one, the fact that they traded a really highly protected second round pick for Collins and got rid of Rudy Gay's contract, and if they're able to get a first round pick for for Collins with matching salary of you know of whatever, that's pretty incredible. Will be really incredible. Dirty Jazz. I think John will go back to Atlanta. I doubt it. There's bad blood there. But uh, Raphael um, made a comment on Twitter that I Raphael Barlow made an interesting uh, comment that the like the the Los Angeles Clippers could use a rim runner with with bounce. And who does that? I mean, honestly, someone like John Collins would fit in at at the with the the Clippers really well. I don't know if they have anything left to trade to the Jazz, but that's something that would be an interesting one. Uh, Anyways, Colin Sexton was awesome tonight. And I have to say uh, it was against the, against the thunder where the Jazz got just absolutely stomped that I really just appreciated Colin Sexton's energy. And I'm sure Will Hardy did too. When you have players that look dejected and distraught and you're getting smoked and and Colin Sexton, you're down 30, and Colin Sexton is out there and just goes 100 miles an hour, does not care. He brings the brings the heat, brings the passion. I love it. And what's nice is on nights like tonight, he brought the numbers too. I mean, what what's really cool about this with Sexton, and obviously I think he's probably more, this is a bad Blazers team, so all of this is a grain of salt a little bit. But what's really nice is what we're seeing with Colin Sexton, he's playing within the offense. Man, this poll is like, is like neck and neck. We got 52% jazz triple double, 48% jazz champions. Too close to call on election night. But anyways, uh, it feels like Colin Sexton is just playing within the offense really well. He's not just going and getting his. Players seem more willing to pass him the ball. And I think it's because Colin Sexton, no, I don't think it is. I know it is. Will Hardy made the, had the, the talk after the game, and I'm sure he talked to the team, obviously, or they, at very least they read his his comments, that if you don't play hard, if you don't play hard, if you don't pass the ball, if you don't give a bleep about the Jazz, then you're not going to play. And one player that has really taken that to heart was, was Colin Sexton. He's passing the ball. He's moving the ball within the offense, and now he's being rewarded. You know, 11 for 17 from the field was awesome. It felt like he couldn't miss. Two for five from three. Look at this. Four assists, 27 points. Just an awesome night from Colin Sexton. And But the most impressive thing to me is that he is having faith in the offense, you know, and he's willing to move that ball because he knows it's going to come back to him. Now, he's taking advantage when the advantage is there, and that's what you're supposed to do. And it's why I think he is more fitted as a sixth man. But it's nice to see that you can play him in the starting lineup and it doesn't gum things up like it was earlier in the year. He's really evolving and you've got to just tip your hat to tip your hat to Colin Sexton and his ability to adjust. Uh, THT had another had a nice night tonight as well. I mean, he's missed all six of his threes. So right there, you can see his field goal percentage. If you go down, what is that? Nine for 13. That means from his two point shots, his driving to the basket, he was nine for 13. Awesome night for THT. He scores 23 points, four assists, four steals. He played great tonight. So, you know, we call this the Adventure Time duo, and it was a great adventure tonight. It was a fun one. Some nights it's not the best type of adventure, but this one was a good one. Sexton, Taylor Horton Tucker, just awesome tonight. And uh, just really cool to see them both play really well. Like I said, it's against the Blazers. Blazers. They're not a good basketball team, but it's nice to see these guys do well. By the way, someone asked me, and I mentioned it on Twitter, is John Collins a, 
a uh, a Ewing theory guy. You know, if I don't know if any of you are Bill Simmons listeners, but I certainly am. Uh, and Bill Simmons has a theory called the Ewing theory, back to when that playoff series when Patrick Ewing got injured and sat out, and the and the Knicks like went deep into the playoffs. And it created the Ewing theory where you ask if a, if an important player is missing and all of a sudden the team starts doing better, are they better without him? Uh, sometimes it proves to be true and sometimes it doesn't. You know, we saw a little bit of that with the Jazz with Markinen going out and Fontecchio started and Fontecchio played really well and the Jazz won like, you know, two of their next three games or three of their next four or something like that. And then they slowly started to go back to being destroyed because they missed Larry Markkinen's shooting, and it's obvious the Jazz are better with Larry Markkinen. But I don't know if the Jazz are better with John Collins. I mean, I like what John Collins does in terms of of the raw numbers, where he's rebounding, he's shooting the ball better, he does some nice things that way. But one of the issues they're having, and this comes from the Andy Larson article, is he's not figuring things out, and the balls he's not doing very well within the offense. And he might be the main culprit of some of the offense really getting gummed up and not doing well. You know, if he's not going to the right spots. One of the things I noticed when I was at the Jazz game, um, I can't remember which game it was. Uh, I, um, it was against the Clippers. And I, you know, I saw Kawhi just destroy the Jazz. Otherwise, the Jazz played pretty well. But one thing I noticed when I was that close is how many times Will Hardy had to point to the floor and tell John Collins to stand here. And, oh, no, you need to be over here. No, you need to come here. And how often he was kind of out of out of position where he needed to be. And I think the Jazz offense flows pretty well and has, you know, it's not something that's too, you know, too stringent. But you do need to be in the right spots. Even offenses where you're in a free-flow offense, you still have to go to the right spots. You still have to move to the right positions. And if the Jazz are frustrated, that's not, after all this time training camp and you know how many games have the jazz played now like you know 25 games and you're still not quite knowing where to go it's got to be a little annoying to be honest and so uh don't be surprised if i mean and now we have three games in a row with with john collins missing with illness maybe the jazz are letting him rest you know it very well could be he's just sick maybe he got COVID or something who knows or it could be that the Jazz are resting him so he doesn't get hurt in case they can get something on the trade block because the ja- the trade, it's not the trade deadline. It's like the trade season begins basically tomorrow because a lot of the free agents that signed last offseason are now eligible to be traded starting tomorrow. So who knows? Maybe the Jazz uh, are going to try to move something, especially with the fact that um, Taylor Hendricks is playing so well. They probably want to give him more time. Fontecchio's playing really well, and he's got nice size. You can kind of play him at the small forward or power forward spot. And so, you know, they probably are a little better with Fontecchio playing instead of John Collins. I'll be honest. Does anyone disagree? I mean, I don't know. You know, obviously, Fontecchio doesn't have the bounce that John Collins does and the ability to hit those, you know, get those huge alley-oop dunks my daughter loved it when you know she loves john collins so if we trade john collins she's going to be bummed but i don't know if the jazz are better with john collins than if they're playing simone fontecchio right i think fontecchio brings pretty much everything collins does and he's playing in the right spots and might be a little bit better defender probably not as good a rebounder uh collins has been rebounding the ball better but i think uh fontecchio might be a little bit better offensive player and is the same size, same position. And so it's an interesting debate, I would say. Uh, Omer Yurtsevin is kind of showing lately why the Jazz went after some more center depth. You know, they we, basketball, what was it, Basketball John or whatever his name was from the, from the Paul, Basketball Paul. Paul, I think it's Paul, ah, what was his name? Paul, I want to say Paul Rudd, but that's the actor. Anyways, they tried to get that center from, if you remember, they gave that crazy contract to basketball Paul and it didn't work out because um because the the Sixers matched or whatever but you can kind of tell why they were doing that because Yurt's been struggling a little bit he doesn't have he's a good offensive rebounder but he does not have the greatest hands inside Paul Reed there you go thank you James big assist I was wanting to say Paul Rudd Paul Reed but anyways you're seeing that Yurt's been is there's some deficiencies there he's not playing per all that great lately 
he does play hard and he is a nice option for games like tonight when you just need depth and you don't have it but we are seeing why the jazz kind of went after paul reed because he would have been a really nice backup center option and the jazz needed him and sometimes you need a more defensive minded center than someone like kelly olenic who's not a very good defensive player so it's interesting to think about, uh, but Yurtsevin plays hard and he had some big moments in some big games this year, but there are times where he also can't honestly hold. I mean, it, the ball gets stolen from him pretty easily when he's in the paint. If it's, if the ball's at his waist, it's, it's getting stolen a lot. And so that's one of the things I'm noticing with him, but nice overall player. And it's nice to have him on the jazz and he might be on the jazz for a while as your third center. You can do a lot worse. So pretty nice. Taylor Hendricks, I think we've mentioned him already, but he's looking, you know, in, in terms of playing with, with Kessler, but Hendricks is just getting so impressive. I mean, you can see why he was the number nine pick with what he's doing on the floor. Will Bowden, 199. Thank you so much, Will. Hey, we can beat another bad team at least. Yes. <laughs> Like we said, all of this shall be taken with a grain of salt or maybe two or three in your beef stew. Put some salt in there, but it's still nice to see. It's better than losing, right? You know, you'd much rather see your rookie like Taylor Hendricks doing things like he did tonight, going two for five from three, hitting transition threes. Um, let's see, seven rebounds for Taylor Hendricks, which is really nice to see because that was one thing I was wondering about. Is the rebounding going to be there? Well, guess what? He's rebounding better now. He's blocking shots. And what else is he doing? He's driving to the basket. He, I mean, he had like two drives to the basket tonight where he just yammed it, you know? Freaking awesome. Really cool to see. Oh, TGD, are you in Portland? That's cool. Was at the game. Jazz looked solid, but we're also playing against what's basically a G League team. Yes, absolutely true. So that's what we should remember. Although the Jazz were missing... You know, Jordan Clarkson, Lowry Markinen, um, they did not play John Collins. So, you know, the Jazz were out three starters. So I guess that's something to mention. Also, Keontae George, they're down four starters. So, you know, the Blazers are terrible. But so you've got to, I don't know, grain of salt, but you also can take some good things from this. Uh, back to Taylor Hendricks. This is looking like a special player for the Jazz. I don't know if he has superstar upside because the handle's not quite there, but I mean, I guess, you know what? He's driving to the basket and just yamming it, and it's awesome. He is so athletic. He shoots the ball really well. Every time he shoots the three, I think it's going in, and he's just an impressive defensive player. He's one of those defensive players where it's he's just got a knack for defending the ball and for defending in space and knowing where to stand. He's one of those guys that puts fear in other guys that they're just not going to challenge him. And if they do, they regret it. I mean, he just figures out how to get his hands on balls. He's got great length and tools that help him do these things, but he's smart. He's got that instinct. He's got the knack baby and he knows what to do. So if someone's driving on the basket and he knows he can weak side block that he's going to do it. If someone's driving to the basket, he knows how to get his hand in and get a steal. He knows he's got the quickness and lateral quickness and size and length to engulf guys on the perimeter. So they'll try to drive on him. Or, and, you know, he's been beat a few times here and there, but who hasn't been? But there are so many times where he, you see him play so well on the perimeter. There's going to be moments in the future as he develops where he is going to be able to play center for the Jazz in playoff lineups where Will Hardy is going to want to have five out offenses with high high level shooters. I mean, Hendricks is such a playoff player. That's what's really exciting about this because he is the type of guy that can, you know, the thing that, that used to just kill the Jazz was this type of player with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell because if you had a guy like Taylor Hendricks who could block shots and then go shoot threes and you can get those big centers that can't shoot and get them out of the paint, it's such a weapon. And then when you've got guys that can just drive to the basket and score on people it's just such an absolute weapon and so it's time to get a little excited guys because taylor hendricks can do all the things he can shoot he can defend he can he moves the ball within the offense he's getting better at it it's still rough offensively but he's doing what we thought he could and that's knock down threes rebound um what's not to like and like i said this is a playoff player this is a guy you're excited about to have on the floor during the playoffs because he can switch onto every player. He can protect the rim. And then when you're on offense, you can spread that floor. 
So if you have a playoff lineup where you have Hendricks, you move Hendricks over, and not all the time, but you can move Hendricks over to the five. You have like Larry Markinen at the four. And then when the Jazz get Cooper flag, he's playing the three. Keontae George is running things. You've got just the floor spread. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And so what an absolute home run for the Jazz that they get Taylor Hendricks, who looks like a hit, and also Keontae George. And we haven't even seen Bryce Sensabaugh. By the way, let's end with that. Oh, uh, well, we got to talk about Chris Dunn, who is awesome. Uh, KD is what uh, Fontecchio called him KD, which was really fun. Five assists for Chris Dunn. I mean, Chris Dunn, I want on the Jazz until he decides to retire. Be just because of the mentality. He's great. I hope the Jazz keep giving him contracts just for his leadership in the locker room, his demeanor. He plays hard. He defends. He can teach these young guys how to defend and how to play. I think Chris Dunn has had a direct impact on Keontae George. And a really good one because we've seen Keontae George obviously didn't play tonight. And you know, it's a hoops nerd show where Keontae George doesn't play. And we're talking about Keontae George, but anyways, Keontae George is defending so much better. And I think every hoops nerd here would agree that he's looking much, much better. That on ball defense is better. And I would, you know, I would say that Chris Dunn has probably been a little bit of a mentor to him and just, you know, teaching him, showing the example, because you got guys like Scoot Henderson on this Portland Trailblazers team. Who's the mentor to to, to Scoot Henderson? Uh, Anthony Simons? I mean, that guy can't defend uh, a bad point, right? So uh, Scoot Henderson is, is uh, yeah, Anthony Simons couldn't defend a logical argument, all right? And Scoot Henderson is learning from him. You know, it's tough. The fact that uh, Keontae George gets to play with Chris Dunn, and Chris Dunn is not does not seem too worried about getting on the floor. That's these are the type of culture guys you want. You know, losing doesn't ruin culture. Bad players do, and when I say bad players, it's like toxic players do. And Chris Dunn is the opposite of that. You know, you can lose and have bad seasons and the Jazz are probably going to lose a lot of games this year. My prediction, I don't think the Jazz expected to win this game tonight. That's what's crazy. I think they definitely did not intend to win tonight. <laughs> and they did. They pulled a last year Jazz win tonight because they rested everyone. It was a back end of a back to back. Utah was expecting to lose and they didn't, which is pretty cool. But so they're going to lose more games. Like it's going to be a tough game against Sacramento. We'll see how the Jazz do. Are they getting better? I actually think Taylor Hendricks is honestly impacting games in a big time way right now. It's pretty crazy. But the point of this is that Chris Dunn is the type of, these are the types of guys that bring culture. You know, people get so worried about losses. Well, you know what? You know who doesn't get worried about losses? Guys like Colin Sexton and Chris Dunn. They're going to be, they're going to play hard. They're going to, they're going to have be great locker room guys no matter what. I'm sure they get mad too when they lose. It's not fun to lose a lot of games. But those guys are professionals and Chris Dunn is awesome and I hope I I honestly if I I you know, I would wouldn't it be cool if we could get Danny Ainge on this show? That would be awesome. I would ask him about Chris Dunn and what he does is just culture and leadership and and it's important. And it's great. And you know what? What's really cool is you can play him on nights like tonight. You can play 26 minutes and he can really contribute. So really cool to see. Um, Ochai Baji, this is what got me excited. Look at this. 12 shots. And he made seven of them. He is running in transition. He's. I was really excited about what I saw from Ochai Baji. This is, Ochai Baji has been kind of my personal most worried about guy. A little bit this season you know walker kessler there's been times where you're like what's going on but it just feels like walker kessler is going to eventually eventually figure it out because at worst walker kessler is a high level defensive big man that can roll to the rim on offense and do some nice things and he can plug and play him anytime you want and he's going to do well but ochai i was getting worried because there's so many times where he just kind of fades into the background and you're just seeing like these really bad stat lines where he's not doing much. And even tonight it's like three rebounds, two assists. But what's really nice is that he's forcing the issue to shoot the ball because, and especially in transition. And it's nice to see. It's an important thing. He's got to impact these games offensively too. And so to see him kind of pushing that ball in transition 
and also jazz players getting him that ball and him knocking it down at a high rate 58 percent is is high level so that's great to see and so much of that is transition if he can be that player that can do that that's awesome you know you just need Ochai Abaji to impact games offensively. And tonight we saw that, and it's really nice. He's not going to become, you know, an all-star or anything like that. But what he can be is a high-level role player where he defends. He's an athlete, you know, does athletic things like rebound the ball, get offensive rebounds, tip in, you know, get the ball before the other team does. Stuff like that. Things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Um, steals, blocks, things like that that he'll get during games. And then shoot the ball, hit the corner three. He can be a high-level role player for this Jazz team. And I think he could be on this Jazz team for the next, you know, 10 years. Why not? His athleticism. And that's what the Andy Larson article mentioned too. The Jazz like Ochai Abaji and see him as a player for the future. But he's got to impact things. And if his impact is in transition and hitting uh, catch-and-shoot threes on offense, that's great. And if he can cut to the rim here and there, get an easy bu a bucket here and there, that's awesome. You just want to see him impact the game. And tonight we saw it, so that's awesome. Yes, it's the Blazers. They're bad. But it was just nice to see because the Jazz need Ochai Abaji to kind of take a step. And he's an older player, too. He's a four-year Kansas Jayhawk. He won a championship there. He's a four-year player, so he should be showing more, you know? So it's nice to see. I'm still going to be watching him. I'm still going to be kind of paying attention to that. But it's just nice to see him showing what he's doing. You know, honestly, I think the Jazz, I mean, we've got to make prayer circles. We've got to do the candlelight vigils. We've got to get Cooper Flag on this Jazz team, and they're going to win a title. If they get Cooper Flag, they are going to win a title. And I want him so badly on this Jazz team, and I assume the Jazz do too. Uh, I want it so badly. I It, it hurts. Um, let's see. I, I was going to mention something else and it slipped my mind. That's okay. Um, the Jazz are going to play against the Sacramento Kings and it's going to be a fun one. The Sacramento Kings are really good offensively. And you know what? It's going to be fun to see Taylor Hendricks out there. Um, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm kind of excited to see. And guess what? Larry Markinen's going to play and it's going to be interesting. I had the, the only bummer is that we don't get to see Keontae George. We don't haven't had a lot of opportunities to see all these guys together. So it would be nice to see Keontae George. You know, he's been so much fun to watch this season, and the numbers are starting to get better with the shooting and everything. Uh, it's just a bummer we don't get to see him play with Taylor Hendricks right now, with Larry Markinen, with Walker Kessler, with Ochai Abaji. So frustrating, but it is what it is. All right, guys, we're still in the lottery, though, and I think the Jazz are still playing capture the flag. Um, what's this? There we go. Uh, right now, this has the Jazz at number seven, but they might be locking that down. Uh, Chicago is starting to look pretty good behind the play of Kobe White. Kobe White is turning into quite the player. Uh, I don't need to go look it up. You can go look it up in your free time if you would like. But I think this is interesting. Memphis is going to get better. They're getting Ja Morant back soon. Their defensive rating is number 11. It's their offense that's been a problem. And getting Ja Morant back is going to help them. And they're like one trade away for one like nice center from going big time. You know? I The Jazz aren't... Tony Jones made an interesting comment on ESPN where he said the Jazz like Walker Kessler and, and want him on the team, but if someone comes and wants to make a big trade for someone to give the Jazz a nice player, they're not going it's Walker Kessler's not gonna hold up if they want Walker Kessler. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Like, does Memphis give the Jazz like a big time trade package for Walker Kessler, who would be perfect for that team? I don't know might be interesting i don't think that happens but it's just an interesting thought you know but a team like memphis is going to get better they're going to outpace the jazz at some point is my assumption uh utah is likely going to be in this sixth spot which is crazy so that's why we're doing the we're doing the tankathon um because it's likely still happening the jazz uh are likely going to be doing that so but games like tonight are fun, and you've got to appreciate the wins when they happen, especially during a losing season. So that's what we're going to do. All right, guys. So the Jazz sit at seventh, 
after tonight, top 10 protected pick. If they go out of 10, then they give it to the Oklahoma City Thunder. But let's see what happens with the Jazz tonight. Oh, Jazz stay at seven. Memphis gets the number one pick. And this gives the Jazz Nikola Topic. Oh, they updated their rankings. Stephon Castle still at eight. He's the guy I like. I like Stephon Castle a lot. I would love to see Stephon Castle on the Jazz. I love that guy. Look at this. Three steals per game, 10 and a half rebounds, six assists, one block. He is sparkling for UConn. I love that kid. I think he's going to be so awesome. All right, let's give a shout out to the All Stars tonight. Let's give a shout out to Christian House Money to Haas, Dirty Jazz Car Wash Channel, The Outlaw Jesse James Nelson, Joshua Hansen, The Danish Destroyer, Ryan Perry, The Legend. Is Sikali Ricebe, the man from down under. Yes, Jake C. Can. See you, Alexa, later. Guess what, Lex? It's going to be your birthday on Monday. If it forget, I want to say happy birthday tonight to Lexa later. See you, Alexa, later. Uh, Jorge Arrizaga, mi amigo de abajo. Jordan the Goat, best role. TGD, total game domination. Tyson Price, the price is right. Austin, our grant editor extraordinaire. Uh, KG to CB. <laughs> he changed the name. Uh... Keontae George to Cam Boozer, Patrick Akubo the Connoisseur, and Robert Hall of Fame. Guys, if you haven't already, if you're a Jazz fan, why haven't you liked and subscribed? Are you not a Jazz fan? Subscribe to the channel. All right, do it. And go to Price Picks. Go get, go sign up. It would be a lot of fun, I promise. All right, guys, I will talk to you next time.